Politics. I'm joined now by the SNP's economy spokesman, Stuart Hosey. Welcome to The Daily Politics. Stuart Hosey, new figures just out show Scotland's trade with the rest of the UK continues to be worth four times more than its exports to the EU. So these numbers just continue to underline why it's far more important for Scotland to remain part of the UK than part of the EU, don't they? Well, they certainly are bigger. There's no question about that. Four times bigger. Uh, four times bigger. But of course, the EU market is eight times bigger. And the growth in trade up until the figures today, I think in the seven years to 2014 from memory, was a 12% increase from Scotland to the rest of the UK, a 20% increase to the EU, and a 50% increase to the rest of the world, driven by EU agreements. Now, Where's your evidence for that? Where are the figures? Well, we will happily publish those figures. I've got them. I've seen them. We've been through this stuff. Happily, happy to do that. More than happy to do that. But the whole point about it is, there's no point simply looking at a static position. What we can't do is surrender the growth we're seeing in the EU and the growth we're seeing globally driven by EU trade agreements. So it's vital, among other things, that we have trade agreements in place to replace the ones we're going to lose when we leave the EU. Yeah, sure. I've got the Scottish export figures here, mm -hmm. issued by the Scottish Government. Mm -hmm. They've been done since 2002. Mm -hmm. Scottish exports to the European Union in 2002 were just over 10 billion. In 2014-15, they were just over 10 billion. They haven't moved in 10 years. I'm it's sorry. I'm sorry. These are your government's figures. I'm sorry, Andrew. I, I will happily publish the figures I have said. You have? But which figures? The, the figures I have given you showing the increase in trade to the EU and the increase in trade to the rest of the world. Happily publish those well, figures. The increase in trade to the, to the rest of the UK from Scotland, under 30 billion in 2002, almost 50 billion in 2014. That's where the rise is. is Scottish government export statistics published by your government. Well, I will publish the figures which I have, which I have given you today. I'm happy to do that. But the point I'm making, and it's a substantial point, that we cannot surrender trade growth and access to EU and global markets by abandoning the EU trade treaties unless and until other alternatives are put in place and we don't revert immediately to the worst case scenario of the tariff heavy WTO rules. Right, but let's look at the figures in detail. And the first question I asked you in terms of the amount of trade that's yeah. done, the latest export statistics that Scotland's data showed that the country sold 49.8 billion, 50 billion pounds to the rest of the UK yes. in 2015. That's 2.1 billion more than the previous year. Mm -hmm. It's increasing. Exports to the EU rose, true, by 520 million pounds to a total of just 12.3 billion pounds. That's 50 billion versus 12.3 billion. So I say to you again, which market is more important? Well, right now on the static figures, there's no disputing the UK market is incredible. As, By a massive as, margin. As, as is Scotland to the rest of the UK, where well, Scotland is the rest of the UK's second largest export market in the world. Right, because actually so, Joanne you know, Cherry, important. your colleague, said it was the first, uh, said about Scotland being England's biggest export destination, which wasn't true. That was in the context of the European Union. She was absolutely right, it's the biggest export market in the EU. Scotland is the our UK's second... Ah, well she didn't second... say in the EU, she just said the biggest export destination. Really? And also she was talking yeah. about uh, goods and services uh, as compared to HMRC overseas trade statistics, which just shows UK exports uh, to the USA, for example, which is way higher. Indeed, and I've just said that, but the whole debate was about the EU, so she was absolutely right. Scotland. Excuse me, I did that interview. It wasn't. She what? said quite plainly that that uh, England, Scotland was England's, big, England's biggest export market. It wasn't just about the EU. And Alex Salmon said on Radio 4, Scotland is England's biggest export market. Well, the, the numbers... It's not true. The numbers are very clear. The yeah, US, it's not true. The US is the our UK's largest export market. Mm. Scotland is the second. Right, OK. But given we're all focused on the EU and Brexit, you know, the argument that Scotland is the our UK's largest export market in the EU is absolutely correct. But the, the key right. thing, the key thing, we're about to abandon trade treaties that will weaken trade growth around the world and revert to tariff-heavy and damaging WTO rules. 
that's where we need to be having the focus. Well, let, yeah, well, let's take that focus then, um, because you are worried about tariffs being placed mm. on goods. It will affect uh, our growth uh, and any free trade deal that might be done. So you're putting down 50 amendments yes. on the Article 50 bill. Now, you've got 54 MPs. That's almost one per MP. I mean, is there any chance you're going to win enough support for any of those amendments? Well, you know, our number one is a white paper. I think there's huge support for that. Uh, secondly, and this falls back to yesterday's uh, Supreme Court ruling. We think the GMC, the Joint Ministerial Council, should take a unanimous view so that any of the devolved nations aren't railroaded. Right. And then when we come to specific things, like ensuring academic funding after 2020, mm -hmm. like ensuring trade arrangements are put in place, like ensuring financial passporting for a financial services industry, one would imagine there would be substantial support for the certainty we currently do not have. If you don't get what you are looking for, what you feel you should be part of those discussions, when will you go for an independence referendum? Well, we're not in a position of calling a referendum today. We're still, no. in, the, we're still in the business sure, of trying... Sure, but by the end of March, no, of no, course, no, Article, Joe, Fickle, Joe, Article 50 will have been triggered. Joe, we're in the position right now, that the Scottish Government are, of trying to persuade the UK Government to take the least worst option to mitigate some of the damage Brexit will cause. That's where we are at the moment. So we need to wait and see what the Joint Ministerial Council say formally about the, U the Scottish Government's submission, which is a very detailed paper indeed, far more detailed than the 12-point presentation the Prime Minister gave at Lancaster House. Stuart Hosey, thank you.